Hey everyone, welcome to week 26. This is Monday, our first day on a whole new theme. And the theme for this week is gonna be one room. So everything is going to revolve around one room of our choosing. And I chose the bathroom, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, let's get started. Now, I told you guys last week that we're trying to do themed weeks that are built on each other, that are actually connected with the things that are done in past weeks. And this is pretty tough. I'm not saying that every single week we're just going to organically kind of phase onto next week's theme and it's going to seem like seamless and um, everything is going to be completely connected. No, that's ideal, but that's very, very tough to do also. But whenever possible, I'm going to try to see what I can adapt from last week's exercises and how I can bring some of those things that I learned and apply them on this week. So I was thinking about the idea of wholeness and bigness that we did uh, last week, and I was like, okay, how can I turn that into something that has to do with space, let's say? I don't want it to be just technical. I don't want it to be about trying to identify the uh, bigger shapes, bigger planes, like bigger abstract qualities in my subject matter. How can it be also about relationships that I can find in a single space? So that's where my mind was kind of going to, like singularity and just oneness. And I thought, well, the core of what we're trying to do with our painted lives, the core of this exercise is really just feeling like there are boundless possibilities within a very limited space that can be your home or your apartment or your uh, workspace. So instead of watching the places that we inhabit as sometimes just boring and we feel like we just have to get out of the house and, you know, there's nothing here to do. We just barely sleep here. This is the place where we're not productive or this is the place that reminds us that we are not in the home that we wish we could be or we don't have the studio that we wish we had. Instead of seeing all the limitations and all the things that get us down about the place that we are right now, I thought, well, what if we choose one place, one room within that place we inhabit and we just stick to that one room? So I thought that this week could be called One Room. We're trying to translate the oneness, the bigness from last week into something that's spatial. So I thought, okay, one room. We're just going to concentrate our gaze into one room. We're going to see all the possibilities. Well, not all. I mean, you know, five days worth of possibilities that one room has to offer. Now, does that mean that we only have to speak about space? Not really. It could be about the way we inhabit that space, you know, what our actions are within that space, how our body is actually affected by that space, how the way we see ourselves is affected by that space. Yes, it is about that space, but it's also about the relationship between that space and everything that is held within it. So ideally what we have to do is not bring external things into that place and try to adorn it. We're not trying to bring exogenous things. We're not going to say like, oh yeah, this space is okay, but if I bring some fruit into it, it would look far more interesting. When in reality, it would be totally off-putting in a sense. What we're trying to do is just work within the sort of natural state of that room and whatever it is we do within those walls, within those limitations. I mean, we were speaking a lot about limitations and boundaries and frontiers last week. So I thought, yes, one room is actually going to physically establish those limitations. You know, you're going to be able to see those limitations. This is not a thing where we have to imagine or try to visualize those abstract limitations that we were speaking about last week that have to do with technique and ability and knowledge and experience. No, no, no. These are physical boundaries. These are there. The walls are there. The door is there. So we're going to work within that space. We're going to feel, you know, physically constrained. Now, what did I pick? I picked our bathroom. And one of the things that I immediately noticed when I picked the bathroom was that just the lighting is perfect and perfect in the sense that it just reminded me of a moment in my painting career. I've spoken about this moment in other videos. It is that one moment where I decided to really, really shorten my palette. I was doing very, very gray, muted paintings. I actually shortened my palette in terms of the hues of available hues, and I also shortened the value scale. So I worked within very limited value range. And I loved that moment of my painting. Honestly, that is one of the moments in my painting that I felt the happiest. And 
I was fulfilled by painting because I noticed the immediate effect a very simple practical exercise could have on the tone of the painting, on the way it was observed, on what it evoked, the feelings that it seeded in the observer. I thought that that was amazing. And it is one of the first times that I've felt a reaction to my painting that went beyond how something was painted. Because before that, people used to say, oh my God, look, this is so beautifully painted. Look how it was executed. It was a lot about execution, which I never felt is actually my strength, to be totally honest. There are some people out there that have this amazing hand and that are able to develop a painting and render a painting and just speak about formal qualities within their painting that surpass anything that I'll ever do, way beyond my ability and my capabilities. <laughs> so I always felt a little weird when people exalted the way I painted something, but this was different. This was about feeling, this was about understanding the painting as a starting point and not really seeing it as something that was painted. As soon as I saw this very, very cool halogen light in our bathroom, I was like, yes, this is totally a reminder of that. This could be a perfect place to just speak about how a lighting condition within a very confined place can generate immediately an atmosphere that is just delicious to paint. You are going to almost immediately speak about that atmosphere. That's what I felt as soon as I started kind of examining this bathroom, because it is a place that we're there every single day, many times a day, and we don't think about it as our subject matter. I never saw it as something that I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I can spend a week in this bathroom and you know, I can produce like five hell of a paintings and this is gonna be awesome. This is what I want to paint. No, I always you know, saw the bathroom. Yes, it is a room that is affected by light and because it is affected by light, then it can be absolutely gorgeous to paint and, and gorgeous to observe, like anything else that's affected by light in this universe. But I had never really turned my gaze onto it. And it was so cool just to see it as something that I don't want to say that could become a painting because, again, I've said this before, but I don't see the act of painting as something that is validating. I don't see how turning something into a painting makes it beautiful. I really don't. I don't think that there's any magic going on once we turn it into a painting. All a painting does is speak about how somebody was looking at this thing for X amount of hours and just reflecting upon it. That's about it. That really is about it. And it is the product of that reflection. And I think that that reflection in itself is valuable, is immensely more valuable than the painting that is being produced. Yeah, you know, I make a painting, but it doesn't mean like I'm going to elevate you through painting. Ugh, I, I think that's one of the most pedantic things about painting. And I wish that we could get rid of that very, very quickly. But I know that painting as object of adoration has been part of our species for hundreds of years now. It's a very, very strong bond that we've created with these uh, objects. So it's not easy to get rid of that quality in painting. I just find it cumbersome, to be honest. I just think it's almost like this uh, baggage that we have to carry when we decide to look at painting historically and contextually, and we could do without that. But anyways, I saw this bathroom, and it reminded me of a couple of things that are really important and are at the core of what painting really is. It has to kind of do with subject matter. I remember when I was uh, studying, everything revolved around what you were going to paint. What is going to be your subject matter? What is that painting, you know, visually going to look like? That to me was super, super important. And I guess because I was pairing my painting and drawing with illustration, well, the final image in illustration holds incredible importance. That is the way you communicate directly and powerfully with your observer. So in my mind, I always had this thought, I don't know what to paint. I have to try to figure out what to paint. You know, the what to paint is something that kills us. That question, oh my God, having to carry that weight is just unbearable at times. How do I choose what to paint? What is my subject matter? Why am I choosing it? Ugh. I don't care about that anymore. I really don't. I think I got to a point where I could follow two paths. One path was going to be, yes, I am what I paint. You know, you are what you paint. So whatever you decide to paint, 
that is what's going to provide an identity for you as a painter. Or it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. You can just speak about the way you perceive things through paint and you can speak about what you're doing through paint, but you don't have to speak about the thing you're painting. I really do feel that liberating myself from the thing that I was painting, oh my God, it's one of the most amazing things that's ever happened to me in my whole life because now that thing I'm painting doesn't really hold any power. Any power in the sense that my painting doesn't revolve around the thing I'm painting. It doesn't at all. If it did, that's when you think, oh, how do I paint fur? I have to have the specific technique to try to communicate that sensibly. Or how do I do this body? I need to know structure. Like I need to know the underlying anatomy and I don't have the knowledge to do this painting, to execute this painting. Or, oh my God, this eye is kind of looking off. I just didn't have the right drawing capabilities. If you give the power to the thing you're painting, then it's always going to be about the thing. So let's say I'm painting a hand. And if that painting of a hand turns out great, like if I do a powerful hand, then great. You know, people are going to go by and say, oh my God, that's a kick-ass hand. Great painting, period, right? But if that painting doesn't come out the way we intended it to, then people are going to see it, or we are going to see it, and, you know, we don't have to show it to people, but we're going to see it and say, oh, that sucks. Why? Because I wasn't able to do that hand. So the painting becomes super binary. It becomes about being able to paint something or not. And that's very reductive. That's a very small way to see painting. And we are going to lose so much more because in essence, you can use a hand to speak about a myriad of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the hand. You're using the hand to speak about whatever you want to speak about. You know, that can vary from painter to painter, so there's infinite possibilities. There are as many possibilities as there are painters out there. Maybe it doesn't matter if the hand turns out really well or not. You know, maybe your hand can have drawing mistakes, and it won't really matter. People are going to notice that other thing that is communicated with that hand instead of just saying, oh my god, look at that finger, that's kind of off. No, if you only give one thing for the viewer to look at. If you're only gonna say that my painting is about my subject matter, you kind of have to hit it out of the park. You kind of have to do an incredible version of whatever your subject matter is. Because if not, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're just pointing out your shortcomings and you're saying, I wasn't able to deliver. And everyone is gonna see that about your painting. So we can actually say, I am what I paint. I am my subject matter. Kind of like Rembrandt in a way, how he bought all these like jewel encrusted uh, antiquities and helmets and robes. And he loved to paint those things. He absolutely loved it. He actually had to sell all that crap he had bought in order to not get into uh, bankruptcy. He was a mess. You know, he bought those things just so that he could paint them. And in that way, I can totally get it. He was like a crow that was attracted to all these little shiny things. So we can actually go into that road and say, I am a painter that's always going to answer to her subject matter. And I'm always going to be attracted to whatever it is I choose to paint. And I'm just going to do a hell of a job to try and execute that painting so that it shows the love and attraction and devotion that I have for whatever I chose to paint. Or you can actually just have experiences through paint and experiences that could take you to a million places. And you are so flexible in the sense that you can paint one thing or another or another or another that it's almost going to be impossible to say, oh yeah, she is defined by this subject matter. I can tell your paintings from a mile away because you always do whatever, blue jays. That's what you paint, blue jays. So whenever we're across the room and we see a painting of a blue jay, we know that's her work, right? People love to do that. People love to associate an artist with a very specific subject matter. And they love to say, okay, I know this. I know this. It's like Van Gogh is sunflowers, period. People love to do those little equations. What I'm trying to do, I think, with this project is to never ground myself in something that I can say, okay, I loved doing that. Because as soon as I kind of sense that I'm getting a kind of this feeling of complacency or this feeling of I'm having this great time painting this, I think I'm getting kind of comfortable doing this, I think I know what I'm doing, I like to change everything up and say, nope, 
let's start from zero back again. Let's encounter all these insecurities and problems that I know I have with my painting. And let's keep learning and learning and learning and learning. So in essence, what that produces is just a very, very strange set of things that I paint. But it, in the end, I just don't see them as a grouping of all these things. But what I see is just one act of painting a single act of painting that is being kind of driven into all these different directions in order to be a stronger act of painting, in order to create a very, very strong bond between me and painting. So I think that this is super awesome because when I thought, okay, let's do bathroom, let's go to the bathroom, do bathroom, I didn't know what to expect. Well, I knew that I didn't want to paint a, <laughs> a roll of toilet paper. Not because it's like, oh my God, everyone's talking about toilet paper in the pandemic, but because in my mind, I already can see three paintings of three different painters that have done three rolls of toilet paper that are super cool. So I don't want to do one because I know my mind is already infected by all these great paintings of toilet paper. <laughs> so I'm going to avoid that one because... If not, I think I'm going to paint the painting that they already painted, and I'm going to feel like an idiot if I do that. So I'm going to try to look for things that are endemic to our bathroom. This is our place. This is our bathroom. And again, I'm not only going to see it as a space, I'm also going to see it as how we inhabit that space. So we can be part of that space too. We can be affected by that space. We can be affected by the light. We can be affected by the steam in the shower in our bathroom. We can be affected by all these conditions that are part of the makeup of that bathroom. And I think that that's going to be super, super cool. The fact that we direct our gaze into this single moment, into this single room, but it doesn't mean that that is our subject matter. We're not going to say, I'm just going to paint a bathroom in five different ways. And that's the week we ticked off that box because in that sense, we would just be painting an object this big object called bathroom. No, we're going to try to navigate that bathroom. We're going to try to see the possibilities within that bathroom. Maybe there is a lighting condition that is going to repeat itself. But instead of feeling like, oh my God, this is boring. I'm always going to be painting these muted palettes. Let's just say, hell yeah, you know, for one week I can experience this very muted cool palette and let's see what I can do with it. Let's see if I can do something that's super exciting with it. And that's going to feel super, super cool. So I think I'm going to grant myself that opportunity to just explore those cool, milky, very heavy atmospheric lights uh, that I'm going to find in that bathroom. And we'll see during the week how our bodies, how we, you know, we as in Danny myself, just manifest ourselves in that context of the bathroom. So uh, today it was super cool. It was just a painting about a shower cap. It was just the most simple, commonplace thing. Danny's shower cap just hanging there because let's face it, I don't need a shower cap. By the way, I'm always like, whenever people see me and I go into a pool where you have to wear a swimming cap, I swam for like 10 years, never wore a swimming cap. I understand, you know, it's hygiene. You don't want hair in your pool. But nowadays, you know, my head is just a natural swimming cap. People can see that you have no hair. I mean, if somebody with a beard would go into that pool, they probably shed more hair than I do. And they still look at me and it's like, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, you have to wear a swimming cap. So that's ridiculous. Anyways, um, it is just about this shower cap being affected by all this atmosphere. And the thing is, if you paint atmosphere, and that's what I was going for uh, today, then the painting is not about the shower cap. It's about, you know, this extension of this atmosphere that is, that is embracing this shower cap. And it just turns into something completely different. You're painting air. You, you know, you're painting thick air. And that's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So I had a blast doing uh, this painting. Uh, that's going to be it for today. But remember, tomorrow, it's Spanish Tuesdays where we're going to keep exploring this bathroom and keep trying to find possibilities within this bathroom. But I've been so struck by the atmosphere and the light quality that I want that to be present in tomorrow's painting for sure. So we'll see how that goes. But thank you guys for hanging out. 
Remember, this is uh, this week's theme. It's going to be one room. So you guys could pick anything you want. You could pick a closet. You could pick a drawer if you want. That would be perfect also. But uh, that's up to you guys. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.